mountainous, rugged heart of Central Asia, where the ancient silk routes ran between Europe and the Far East, comes a spicy cuisine, a world where the guest is king. Welcome to the delicious generosity of Afghan food. In Afghanistan, cooking rice takes time and dedication, and there are many styles of rice dishes. The most famous is from the capital, Kabli Palau, considered to be the national dish. When you go to weddings, big parties, Kabli Palau is a first main dish, and it's a dish of celebration. Hasib Miazad has worked in many jobs since he arrived in Australia 20 years ago. Away from his family, he had to cook for himself and spent long hours talking recipes with his mother back in Kabul. His food became so good, his friends suggested he open a restaurant. So a year later, he opened Bamiyan in Sydney's Inner West. Kabuli Palau is always on the menu. Hasib starts by frying a diced onion until golden brown then adding a lamb leg cut into large pieces. Use a big chunk pieces. Use uh, garlic, some salt. One tablespoon is good. When the lamb is sealed, he covers it with water, bringing it to the boil. Then slowly simmering, skimming the surface occasionally as it cooks for an hour and a half. Looks like a really nice rich broth. Yes. Uh, the stock, we're going to use it to flavor the rice. The meat is uh, ready. When the meat is tender, Hasib sets it aside and starts on the deep, rich spice stock which will flavour the rice, cooking white sugar in a dry pan until it's dark brown, then adding the lamb stock, along with garam masala made with bay leaves, cinnamon, cloves and cardamom, salt and some extra freshly ground cardamom. Hasib likes to use cellar or par-cooked rice for his palau. He soaks it for four hours, then cooks it in boiling water until it's almost cooked. But you see, the rice is much, much longer now. It is. Yeah. Okay, now this, we're going to drain all the excess water. Not too much oil. Man. Rice would never be cooked without a garnish, and Hasib slices battens of carrot, which are cooked with sugar and a little oil to caramelize until they're glossy. For a one kilo usually. He adds sultanas and heats them through for a minute before placing them into a bowl and adding a little more ground cardamom. For the final stage, the strained rice has the rich spice stock poured over. We're going to make sure the uh, stock goes everywhere. So we use one of these spoons. Along with a good extra sprinkling of garam masala and ground cardamom. In a special touch, Hasib heats oil until smoking and then pours it over the aromatic spices. Amazing, so that brings the best out of the spices. Yes, exactly. He then makes holes for the rice to steam evenly, adds the spiced carrot and the tender pieces of lamb. Goes on the, top. the final cooking needs a special cotton cover to absorb the excess steam. It's called a sidak and it stops the rice becoming gluggy. Then leave it on very, very low heat for 10 minutes, and voila. Ah, wow, spices and beautiful rice. Now we want to take all the meats out, leave it on the sides here. So this is how we garnish it, bit of rice first, meat. Why do you hide the meat in the rice? I don't know, it's just a bit of surprise. We get one piece of meat in the spoon as well, and say, wow, yeah. <laughs> so. Garnish. Now we have some uh, almonds mm -hmm. yeah, and some uh, pistachios. What do you think? That's a masterpiece. Yeah. You did say Afghanistan ruled the rice world and I think you're That's right. right. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Mm. We do the best rice in the world, I think. On our next food safari, Danish food. 
from the most sensational gravlax to dense bread, beautiful roasts and the best open sandwiches. 